When it comes to Bigfoot, there are two kinds of people, skeptics and believers. If you're a believer, it's probably because you've had your own encounter with the beast. With over 50 new sightings a year, men and women from across North America are eager to share their stories. As rare as these encounters are, there are enough to warrant a search party for this elusive creature. It does beg the question though, why are so many people able to spot this thing without ever having proof of its existence? These are the types of questions being asked at the second annual Spokane Valley Sasquatch Roundup. Speakers came from all over the Pacific Northwest to share research, discuss common behavior reported, and promote future research. And research is exactly what Stephen Major of Extreme Expeditions was prepared to do. As organizer of the Sasquatch Roundup, Major had planned this event right before leading his very own investigation. Two of the event speakers had agreed to accompany Major, Larry Beans Baxter, a Bigfoot researcher and police officer from Alaska, and Amy Boo, co-founder of Project Zoo Book, a group which seeks to bridge the gap between Bigfoot researchers and the scientific community. Together, this team is prepared to spend four days in Stevens County, Washington. The team chose to focus their efforts on this location because of some recent findings that were discovered by Will Ulmer. Will is a Bigfoot investigator who founded Bigfoot of Stevens County. He's been tracking Bigfoot activity in a specific area for over seven years now. He's had numerous encounters with a creature that Will believes to be Bigfoot. When Major learned of Will's discoveries and this high activity zone, he decided to see this area for himself. Major's plan is simple. Bring his team to examine Will's latest discovery and spend some time in the woods collecting evidence and documenting any strange happenings. Because of all the activity that Will has reported, the team believes that if Extreme Expeditions Northwest teams up with Bigfoot of Stevens County, not only will they be able to find Bigfoot signs, they might just have the chance to have a face-to-face -face encounter in the Pacific Northwest. The team is on their way to Coville, Washington. Coville is a small town of less than 5,000 people, nestled in the northeast corner of the state. Just outside of town lies Coville National Forest, covering one and a half million acres. Will's findings are not the only bits of evidence. There's a rich history of Bigfoot in this region. Less than 15 miles north of Coville back in 1969, the Cripplefoot Trackway was discovered in Bossburg. This trackway fueled the Bigfoot community to keep searching for this creature. Ever since then, there have been dozens of reports annually from this area. Bigfoot is in these woods, and this team of researchers are determined to find it. All right, Stevens County boys. Man, Beans, I'll tell you what, I am damn excited to get up to Stevens County, man. In fact, I haven't been this excited since the last time we went to Fort Chatham, Alaska. There's some new territory and there's some exciting stuff going on. Well, up there. I've been hearing about the activity in this area. I'm really hoping we get some stuff, some good audio, a visual sighting, something. I'm really excited to hook up with Will and uh, have him take us out to his research area. The crew met Will and learned about his recent discovery. Everyone was excited to find this spot and resume the search. They followed Will about 20 minutes north to a remote location that he's been scouting for years. As they were nearing the research site, Will stops and gets out of his truck. Never been up this road here, but uh, it just screams squatch to me. And a lot of the vocalizations and oh, stuff yeah. like that have been coming up this side of the hillside. So, might be something you're interested in. This area is truly promising 
and less than a mile from Will's base camp. He frequently hears screams, knocks, and unusual sounds coming from this very hillside. This road is one of many areas that the team will be scouring. Now that the crew has arrived, it's time for the work to start. Before anything else, it's crucial to set up a secure perimeter. Bigfoot are known to be curious animals. With all this new activity in the woods, the creature may want to see for itself what all the ruckus is about. That's why setting up motion detectors and cameras is priority number one. Blind spots are the last thing you want in Bigfoot country. We've just arrived at our site, which is about uh, 20, 25 miles north of Colville, Washington. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get our camp set up, do a gear check, get everything set up for this evening, and uh, formulate a game plan after that. While everyone set up camp, Will shared a startling story that happened just a few years ago. Less than three miles from this location, Buddy and I were camping, and around 11, 11 o'clock or so, we got a vocalization that lasted for a minute and a half, which we ended up uh, capturing on our audio recorders. And I wasn't in bed for more than 10 minutes when I heard something slowly approaching my tent. And it sounded bipedal reached underneath my tent. And next thing I know, it lifts the tent up and lifts my air mattresses up. So my head just kind of goes up like this. The next thing that happened was, I, I, I can hear it kind of stand up and the top of my tent, which is about seven feet, gets pushed down, just a, just a tad. And then I could hear it move around to the left side of my tent where I can see it actually pressing against the, the side of the tent and I, I, I heard it sniff the air at least three times. And then my watch alarm goes off and I guess I'm assuming that it spooked it. It tripped on my tie down in the tent which pulled the entire tent with it, which freaked me the hell out. I eventually jumped out of the tent with my firearm, shining everything with the spotlight. And we never saw anything, but I swear I could hear like a woman's voice just at the edge of the darkness. And I couldn't make out any words, but it sounded female to me. It was hard for me to go back to sleep, so I started doing a little video vlog. And uh, while I was doing that, I heard multiple wood knocks. And you can hear them while I'm talking to the uh, video camera and everything. Stories are one thing. But hearing a story in the same spot where it happened really brings it to life. As Will finishes his bone-chilling story, eyes are focused and hands steady for what's to come. Major knows that a cell phone camera is not going to be enough for this elusive creature. That's why he's come prepared with the right equipment needed. The reason that we're here is to perform a thorough investigation of the area to see what kind of credible evidence that we can find of Bigfoot here in the area. So tonight what we're doing is we're setting out a number of different things. We have game cameras, we have infrared cameras that will be recording, we have audio gear. We have some of the most comprehensive gear that we've ever had before on an expedition. Being prepared for this type of expedition is crucial. But no matter how prepared you are, finding a Bigfoot is like winning the lottery. And even a ticket is hard to come by. Some of the difficulties that we will be facing up here is that it's very, very dense forest. There's a lot of foliage. You're not going to get a lot of clear field of vision, which could hamper all of our night vision and thermal images. Moving through the forest is going to be very, very difficult as well. Bigfoot isn't the only thing in these woods that concerns them. The local wildlife create another set of obstacles. Of course, you see in front of me a bunch of firearms, which I know a lot of people are <sighs> uneasy about when it comes to firearms and Bigfoot. But we're not out to kill it. We're just uh, out here for research and these are just for our protection from the local wildlife mainly cougar wolves and bears um, in case that rogue bigfoot decides to try to kill us you know we have something that, at least to defend ourselves ars shotguns ak-47s pistols is basically what we carry when we're out hiking along 
I'm really excited to be here. Uh, we've heard from Will that uh, there's a lot of activity here, a lot of vocalizations, a lot of knocks. So uh, I'm just really hoping that we can get out and uh, have some experiences tonight. Some of the problems though is I'm not familiar with this area at all. I'm not familiar with the vegetation, uh, the animals that are around here. Uh, so I think we're gonna have to rely on Will quite a bit to uh, be our guide in, uh, in this part of the country. The camp is now officially set up and dusk is upon them. Cameras surround the camp and the team is ready for any activity or noise. As the darkness grows, so does the anticipation for what may come in the night. Northern Washington is known for its timber production and for good reason. Stretched across this state are millions of acres of dense forests, and in the middle is this group of modern-day explorers looking for answers to age-old questions. It's been less than 24 hours, and already the team has started hearing some strange sounds. I didn't sleep very good at all, and I was just drifting off to sleep, and I heard a really loud sound uh, from, from that direction, and it sounded like a tree fell over or a car crash or something. I, I don't know, but it was really loud. And then I, I, it woke me up and I sat there and listened and listened. I didn't hear anything else, so. Something moving through the brush over here. And it, it sounded like somebody taking steps through the brush over here. Stephen and Will have identified the direction of the wood knocks coming in from the Southwest, which points precisely towards Will's Squatchy Road. The team has decided to name this road Squatch Road, and it looks like it's going to deliver. The team is eager to traverse towards the West Hill to not only explore in the direction of the wood knocks, but also to see Will's discovery from a couple days ago. However, Beans and Amy want to set up a trail camera to the east of camp to cover the opposite direction. What we're gonna to do today is we're gonna start out on this trail behind me. We're going to walk the perimeter of the lake. And what we wanna do is we're gonna take some game cameras with us, but we don't wanna set them up just anywhere. We wanna look for signs. We wanna look for disturbances, game trails, footprints of any type of animal, really. We don't wanna leave the rest of our equipment back at camp, so we're leaving Steven here. He's going to reconfigure the cameras we have set up here, see if we can catch anything tonight. Okay, guys. Be safe out there, have a good time, and be very mindful of any sign. And if you see anything interesting, give me a holler on Channel 5. Sounds good. Sounds good to me. We'll see you later. See ya. Bye. Beans and Amy make their way through the woods, keeping their eyes peeled and ears sharp. They've already heard various sounds and tree knocks since they've arrived in the area, but have yet to hear any sort of vocalization. Vocalizations are rare, but if there is a Sasquatch in the area, the team may get lucky. So when I first got invited to come to Stevens County, I, I wasn't really sure what to expect. Um, I watched some of the videos that uh, Bigfoot of Stevens County had put on and uh, heard some of the vocals that uh, he'd heard in this area. So I was, I was intrigued and uh, we got here and I actually uh, was pretty impressed with the terrain. It's not quite as unforgiving as Port Chatham, but uh, it's very similar, uh, very thick uh, undergrowth and forest and just hard to traverse. Uh, you've also got a variety of uh, terrain here. You've got uh, rocks and trees and moss and then areas where it's just dry and dusty and it's a, uh, it's a real, interesting terrain here and uh, capable of sustaining all types of different wildlife. Look here, Amy. Oh, the ant hills. You can see the toes here. I don't really see claw marks. And thinking, you know, could it be a double bear step, telltale impression there. So mm -hmm. it's definitely interesting. So the impressions we found on the ant hill here, uh, they're pretty interesting and there's two of them, but they're just not that far apart for me to think that it's the stride of a Bigfoot. It's, it's always good to document stuff like this that you find.
All right, so our goal right now is we're gonna try and find a place where this trail and a trail to the lake intersect. And we're gonna put a trail camera there. Hopefully we can get some wildlife on its way down to the water to get a drink. The noise definitely sounded beastly, but to be sure, Beans radios camp to check if anyone has been making calls. Stephen confirms that no one at camp has been making any calls. Amy and Beans stay put to keep listening, and they catch yet another vocalization. So we're walking through and we hear another sound, another vocalization, and it sounds further away than the last one. And I radioed Stephen and asked him if it might have been somebody in camp, and uh, he said that nobody in camp made any vocalizations. After listening a while without another call, the two are convinced this is a hopeful area to set up their trail cameras. I've put in a waypoint on my GPS for this trail camera so uh, I can find it when I come back to retrieve it. To set up a game camera, there are two things to consider. One, the best field of view with the greatest potential for traffic, animal or otherwise. The second is any evidence of sign needs to be monitored because chances are that site will be visited again. Beans and Amy had a case for both. They had a wide field of view and they had found some tracks, not to mention the vocalizations they had just heard. We found a ant hill with a pretty nice impression. It could be bare, but there's definitely an impression here with some toes on it. Outstanding, outstanding. So we covered about two miles of ground out here. We're gonna go back to see Steven now as Amy and Beans make their way back to camp, the others have been prepping gear to venture up the West Hill to investigate Will's recent discovery. So the whole reason we're out here is because of Will and the research that he's done in this area. So uh, I'm really excited to go out with him and have him show us around and uh, see what he's found. Well, there's an old uh, dried up creek, uh, creek bed up there. So there's uh, some impressions worth checking out. I've always been interested. I've always wanted to do this stuff. And uh, I was getting tired of seeing the videos on YouTube with the same boring stuff. And I wanted to add my two cents to it. So my initial start was to try to debunk as much stuff as I can because I, I didn't quite believe everything that was being put out there. I've been doing this for seven years now. And some of the stuff that people have claimed that I thought used to be far-fetched is actually pretty darn true. So far, I can't stop. Um, the more I search and try to debunk something, I'm left with more questions than answers. And that's what keeps driving me along. Will guides the team members up West Hill and shares with them his findings. All right, so came up here earlier hiking around, found some, uh, well, impressions, maybe possible juvenile tracks, one here, one here and then another, what looks like a shape of a foot actually in the water. Yeah. And they're not a deer pattern or... Oh wow. Yeah. I mean, you can see the outline. Mm -hmm. How the moss is just pushed up on it. What we do have here is we have a confluence of game trails. Some recent, some old, because this is your only water source. It's really good work on his part. Every time I'm, I'm hiking, and if I'm in a really dry location like this, I'm always looking for spots that have a lot of green foliage, and mostly tree moss, because there's always gonna be some sort of water source nearby. I, I, I think you more of the ball of the foot, maybe, right there, since it's all indented. And then this. You can see what large toe index, which means it'd be a right foot. You can see how it kind of sidestepped, possibly. Weight pushed down, pushed the rock down, Move the dirt, possible left foot here, yeah. where the ball of the foot toes. Probably just slid down this rock ledge here, taking off the tree moss off the rock, pushing it down, next step, then onward. Measures about, I mean, I'm estimating about 13 inches. Yeah. Not out of the range of a human. Yeah. But the train we just walked through. 
Can you imagine walking barefoot? No. No. The team seems to have uncovered a series of clues that all point to a Sasquatch in the area. The investigation continues as they look for more sign. These tracks that Will are showing us are really interesting and he's got some more up here on the hill and we're going to go check those out. Heel and then toes. 13 inches just like the one we found down here. So this is exciting. Will gave us a really good analysis of some potential trackway and some potential imprints, possibles of something. But his analysis of the tracks was beautiful because they took into account the step, the foot, how it would react in this uneven slope here, how the weight of the heel would push down the dirt under that rock, things like that. Now that is some great analysis. Some members of the Bigfoot community believe that tree structures are a sign of Sasquatch habitation. While this occurrence can happen naturally, this series of tree structures in the same area builds a much stronger case than coincidence. A likely sign that Mother Nature was the cause of two trees leaning against each other is if the root system is still attached to the tree and likely tipped over. However, Will has a suspicion that this isn't the case with the tree structure he has discovered. What do you think? I think it was placed there. A natural fall, then the roots would be in there and it just rotted out, fell over, possibly chopping that one off, which karate chopped it and then dropped it. But uh, there's no root system underneath this one, which means obviously this was placed here. So we found not one, but two possible structures in this area, uh, not very far at all from where we found these tracks or impressions. Uh, it's pretty interesting. and. We're gonna document this and uh, take photos and video and we're gonna keep looking. Some of the native stories say that the Sasquatch will peel off bark for their shelters and uh, their bedding areas. So it's kind of interesting that we have tracks, possible stick structure all leading the same way and then shredded bark. So I've been doing this for seven years now of actual field work, uh, research. And uh, I get tons of reports every year. And what I'm actually looking for is not actually the sighting, but the locations. I'm looking for, uh, I'm trying to figure out an actual pattern of how these creatures move. So far I've, I've figured out that, you know, the most activity is in the spring and the fall. And there's certain areas where they move, certain areas they don't go, all based on uh, the seasons. With all that gathered over the last seven years, we've been able to closely pinpoint areas that we will uh, get activity in when we go in. Will's years of experience and field work are paying off today. The team is in a hotbed of Sasquatch activity. I got something over here, guys. That would be worth casting. What's that? That would be worth casting. Coming up this little incline, I found this really good track. Uh, you can see toe impressions and heel impression, and uh, it's pretty cool because I think this is the best track that I've ever found. So this track looks like it might be castable, so I've set a waypoint on my GPS so we can find our way back here and cast it. Will brought us out. He showed us what he found earlier today. And then he did a little more investigation and he found a nice trackway, it's a nice 13 inch imprint consistent. And we've been following that for about the last hour. It's really cool what Will's doing here. Um, he's really exercising good tracking skills. He's pointing out small little imperfections in the ground where maybe a rock or stick was disturbed and moved. The team has uncovered some interesting evidence, but now they're ready to shift their gaze. They've been following signs through the woods, but now they're gonna to try to bring the bees to them. Will starts doing some tree knocks and hopes to hear a response. After several series of knocking and listening, 
everyone decides it's time to regroup at base camp to prepare for tonight's activities. We were just sitting down at our camp, having some dinner, and Will came over and said, hey, he's got some eye shine behind his camp. And so we came over here quickly. We brought our night vision and our thermals to see what we could get. We haven't got much of a signature yet, but Beans definitely heard something moving through the woods. Will saw some uh, eye shine over here above his camp somewhere. What do you see? See this tree with all the little knobs sticking out of it? Yeah. Back back there, like I thought I saw just like a little flash, you know, like a eye shine or something. This direction. Will believes he just saw some eye shine from a tall creature right from his camp. So you saw like eye shine or something? Yeah. It was above the sign. Just measured it. It is eight feet and the eye shine was at least a foot above that. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, whatever it was was, you know, nine feet tall because the, the ground does elevate a little bit. going up in the hill there a little bit uh, to check out what the uh, night shine may have been that Will had just seen. And uh, Amy went out in front of us up there, about 25 yards in front of us, and uh, Hello. did a little calling, Hello. did some singing, did a few things like that, trying to see if we could get a, maybe, you know, female, get a response out of whatever it may be that had come down and, and uh, you know, made the eye shine. We didn't get much of a response from that. I didn't get anything good on the night vision of the floor, but I will tell you this, I moved up to where Amy was, and right before I got to her, I heard some movement, some crackling and crashing through the bushes to the left of me. There was something there. Guys, it's not even nine o'clock yet, so if something just peeked up on us, it'll be back. Since you got something running around up there, more than you know, this is a good opportunity if it does come down to a visit to us tonight, we'll be able to pick it up. This is that's recording, and so hopefully, we'll get a visitor, man. I heard something that way. So we just heard a knock at 1033, and it's definitely a power knock. It almost sounds like a gun rifle. But you don't have that, that vibration that you get from a gunshot. So we just heard a high pitch, I'm assuming a high pitch scream off to the east. Lasted for at least probably a good 15, 20 seconds. Don't you think? Yeah, I agree. And then we just did a wood knock and it seemed to respond to that. Now it's just a big waiting game. Now, my opinion, and this is just my opinion, a single wood knock is more like a like a sonar blast from a submarine. 
It's just like a, a location beacon. And uh, I believe they're on the move when you hear those things. Eventually, if you're lucky, you might start hearing these drumming type knocks, which is just repeated knocks, just continuously. And uh, every time we've ever heard that, we've got a lot of activity. So I, my theory is it's basically calling in the whole clan. So when you start hearing that, that's a, definitely a territorial type of knock. Well, it's pretty quiet right now, but that's usually how it happens. You know, go through a little dry spell after some action and then the real fun begins. So I'm gonna be staying up for probably a couple more hours and uh, let everyone else get some sleep. And uh, if anything happens, I'll yell out. After an intense start to the night, the activity has subsided. Reports commonly feature bursts of high activity, followed by extended periods of silence. Will has decided to take watch to let the rest of the team members get some rest. He's going to post up, prepared to wake the group if something happens. Last night, after we went to bed, Will stayed up. Around midnight, he heard another tree knock and then decided to stay up till about 2 a.m. This morning, around 6.07 a.m., we were awoken by was a loud scream coming from up in the area where we had last night's activity. So the plan for today is to go back up into the area where we had the uh, sighting of whatever it was last evening, do some tracking, an investigation there and proceed farther up to where Beans found that beautiful possible Bigfoot imprint which we intend to cast, set up some game cameras and come back for the day and we'll return up there tomorrow to retrieve the cast and hopefully we'll have something on one of the game cameras. So today we're going to go back up on the hill where Beans found his possible Sasquatch print and I'm going to help with the casting of that and it's exciting because I've helped with others in the past, but not one where I was right there when it was found. We've gathered together some water, some casting material, and some skewers to act as reinforcement, kind of like a rebar in our print that we're going to cast. We're gonna go back up the hill, find Bean's print, and cast it. So I got some good sleep last night, and uh, today I wanna to get back up to that area where I found that track. So uh, I can't wait to get up there and take another look at it and uh, put some plaster in the ground. We have a lot of valuable gear with us here at the camp. We don't wanna leave that unattended. So I'll be staying behind while the rest of the team goes up to do the casting of Beans' print today. Beans and Amy retrace their steps from yesterday, staying vigilant to look for anything out of the ordinary after last night's encounter. They stopped by the watering hole Will showed them yesterday to observe the ground and check for any new sign. All right, so we're here at the watering hole getting ready to set up our camera. And uh, I'm just checking to see the kind of tracks that are in the area. Uh, we've got deer, uh, canine, and looks like raccoon. So this is definitely a gathering place for different types of animals uh, to get water. So if we don't get any uh, Bigfoot, we should for sure get uh, some deer or something. All right, so this is the tree that we're gonna use to place our trail camera. Uh, it's got a good look over the watering hole down here. And it's about 50 feet from there, which is well within the 80 foot range of the camera. So once I turn this on, we're going to have about 30 seconds to get out of the way. Then it's going to start recording when it senses movement. The motion-activated camera is now live, and we'll watch this area as Beans and Amy continue up the hill to locate the track and begin the plastering process. I do a lot of casts of other animals 
I do things for scout troops and things like that, and we'll go out and find coyote prints or raccoons or deer or people prints. So I know how to mix things up and do the casting, but I'm really excited to watch this take place today where we're having a possible Sasquatch print. All right, so we've been mixing the casting material for about 10 minutes now. The team is excited to be bringing home tangible evidence from this mission. Collecting casts help the team understand how big this creature may be, and it provides a data point to help understand patterns in this area. So now we've got our plaster poured, and uh, we want to keep an eye on this area, and specifically on this trail where I found the track. So I'm going to set another camera up right on that tree, looking down toward this trail in this area in here, and uh, we'll pick it up tomorrow when we come get our plaster. Red dog leader, red dog one. Plaster's in the ground, we're on our way back. We're gonna poke around the woods, take our time on the way back. They now have two game cameras up, watching over two different locations with tracks on West Hill and one stage to the east of camp, ready to trigger near a different set of prints. Beans and Amy make it back to camp after successfully making a cast. Last night, the team heard some loud knocks and screams coming from West Hill. After consulting with some maps, they've discovered that Squatch Road is just beyond West Hill. Stephen decided they'd best traverse Squatch Road themselves to see if they could come across any sign. With so many of the screams and wood knocks coming from this location, the team members are hopeful the heat will turn up. They've just begun their journey, and already they've come across something. This looks like we could have an overlapping track. First pigeon toed, and then the yeah. back foot. Yeah, no, I see what you're saying. With the second foot right here. Well, like Still bears. a really good spot, though. And then, of course, boom, boom. Yeah. Bear. Definitely bear. After some quick analysis, Will's determined the track they found is a double-step bear track. Bear prints can be very large, but they're also very round. However, if the back foot steps in the same track as the front, it makes the track elongated, resembling a Bigfoot. Will's never been up here. Uh, we're not really sure what's up here. It doesn't look residential, but uh, we're gonna check it out. It looks kind of squatchy up here. Will locates another impression on the side of the trail, but this time, it's not a bear. It's 14 and a half inches. It has that foot pattern, but I don't see anything else up there. All the moss where it stepped is dead. Everything else is green around it. The track is inconclusive, but it tells the team there are more animals than just bear in this area. I want to stop for a minute here and get you to take a look at these woods here. Look at how thick they are. Look at all the fallen timber in there. I'll tell you what, if a Sasquatch had to run, yeah, I don't think he could run very fast through that, given everything he might trip over or run into. It's just so dense and thick forest. It's hot and dusty on this road today. And I'll tell you what though, if a Sasquatch either walked down this road across it, it'd be a perfect opportunity for him to leave a track. We made it about a mile and a half down the road here. Uh, it's, there's some pretty steep uphills and downhills that kind of rolls. We found 
some turkey tracks, cougar tracks, elk tracks, um, oh, and bear tracks as well. We found bear tracks. The group has now spent a few hours scouring the area looking for sign. They've identified numerous amounts of species that have walked this road. They've covered the area thoroughly and are ready to head back to camp. So we're walking back to the truck and uh, we had already scanned this area pretty good for tracks. And we came through this, uh, this clear cut here, this open area, and uh, we found this track here. I don't think it was here when we came through the first time. So uh, we're gonna look around and see what we can find. It was. I had plaster, I'd cast it just in case. This is now the second impression the team has found on Squatch Road. Both prints were isolated without any other tracks near them. The team is left with more questions than answers. As we were coming back, uh, I kind of peeled off from the back of the group and let the group go ahead of me. And uh, I stopped to let them get a little further ahead of me. Uh, I was fleering in the tree line something really weird it almost sounded like a whisper but it was really short just a or something it was really creepy and uh, i'm glad that uh, we're at the end of squatch road because uh, i don't think i want to go up there anymore i'm ready to head back to camp this place has a very spooky vibe to it it's almost like the evil dead kind of spooky vibe to it because you hear these consistent things coming out you know from the forest around us. Clearly identifiable tree knocks. I mean, it's not, what I'm hearing is not a, a branch falling out of a tree. I mean, this is something pounding wood on wood. You know, that's one thing. And then beastly whales, they're animalistic. It's something that uh, either is, you know, extremely angry or in a great deal of pain, or is intentionally trying to inflict terror upon people that it are is here. It's a lie, but that's a good way to put it. It's a, it's a little um, intimidating, you know, like I'm not gonna really go out walking here by myself and I don't know that I would come back. Maybe if, maybe because I like to do things that I don't, that I'm afraid to do, but I don't think I would choose to come out here camping by myself. I'm just feeling uneasy because it's just so quiet. We've had activities for four days straight, and now it's just eerie, just eerie quiet. It's like, yeah, you know, I don't know, maybe my imagination's running away with me, but uh, I just feel like something's coming. After having so much activity the previous nights, the researchers are wondering why it's been so quiet. They've now been listening and monitoring their cameras into the night with no signs. They understand it's their last night in the woods, and although they've been successful in covering tracks, they have yet to have a close encounter with whatever was circling their tent last night. Yeah. Will decides it's time to change strategies. All right, so, so far it's been really quiet tonight. It's about 11 o'clock. Um, we haven't really heard anything squatchy. So uh, we're gonna take a little walk down the road here and uh, do uh, one last ditch effort to maybe throw out some knocks and see if we get a response. sitting out there watching us the whole night. Whatever is out there responded immediately to the calls Amy had made. Walked out here to the 
place where they saw some ice shine the other night and we uh, fleered around a little bit and Amy let out a little call and there was a knock almost immediately after and uh, just felt like something was out there. And then on the way back uh, to our camp, we heard a couple of sticks snap in the woods across from our campsite. So went in and fleered and listened. I definitely think something's out there. I mean, just getting that knock back from her call just kind of adds to the mystery. We were sitting here around the fire and we thought we heard a knock over by Will's camp. So we ran over there and checked it out. It's a little hard to be objective when you're terrified. The group flirted the area and monitored the night vision cameras for a while longer. But the sudden spike of activity came to a sudden halt. I'm going to stay up till about 2 in the morning if it's quiet. and Will's going to stay up uh, a little bit longer and keep an eye on things so we can get some sleep. Morning, Will. Morning. What time you get up? I haven't gone to bed yet. You haven't gone to bed yet? Just wanted to make sure you guys got out of here in one piece. <sighs> Damn. Any action last night? All night long. Well, what'd you get? Well, starting about 2.45, we had uh, knocks and screams throughout the night, all the way up to about 6.15 this morning. Holy shit. Did you get anything on audio? I'm sure I did. Excellent. Excellent. Anything on the thermals? Not a damn thing. Maybe at least one rabbit. <laughs> That's disappointing. Will reviews the audio with Steven to share what was captured. The knocks and screams were consistent with what the team has been hearing. What's certain is that the same creature has been stalking around their camps. But what is still a mystery? Well, it's the last day of the 2019 Stevens County Bigfoot Expedition. And it always seems like the last day comes way too soon. So what we're gonna do this morning is we're gonna head back up to where Beans found his imprint and we're gonna retrieve that casting. And I'm very excited about that because it's actually the first casting that I've ever done. And I think it's gonna come out to be a good one, hopefully. We've also got a couple of game cameras up there, which we're excited to check the footage on that to see if anything came to visit uh, the casting site, little watering hole that was up there. So having a extreme expedition out here, um, that was something new for me. I'm usually out here solo or, you know, one or two other people, that's it. And um, to bring these guys out to an area that uh, I find to be extremely active and to have them actually witness and hear the things that we have been hearing for years, it's, uh, it's a great feeling to actually have them experience these things. This is the first time I've got one of these out of the ground, so I'm a little nervous, but I think I can do it. We 
we just got Beans' cast out of the ground and uh, it's a little fragile. One of the, the toes actually broke off on it, so I'm a little worried about putting it in a box. So it's a little delicate, so I'm gonna carry it down the hill with the best of care. So the group meticulously make their way back to camp with their cast, collecting the cameras along the way and continuing to scan their surroundings for evidence. You never know when and where the next discovery awaits. All right, so here's the camera that we put up where they saw the eye shine the other day. And uh, I know we came back in this area a little bit last night, so it's gonna have some probably some video of us, but uh, hopefully it has some other stuff. Well, it's only 9.30 in the morning. We've already uh, got our cast and both our trail cameras and got a couple of miles under our belt. I think we're doing all right. Right on, man, we get it done. Extreme expeditions northwest and Bigfoot of Stevens County have closed a chapter on a book yet to be completed. This trip continued to unveil more of the mystery of Bigfoot. Data was collected, possible patterns recorded, and firmer belief in an ancient creature strengthened. That's why this trip was more than profitable. It was successful. The book isn't closed on Bigfoot, and each chapter written brings us closer to the answer we all know to be true. The activity was very similar to what we experienced four years ago. Maybe just a little less dramatic. Maybe because I'm coming back out here expecting this stuff to happen. Even though we didn't get the, the scream that I was hoping for out here, we did get some vocalizations that were very similar. Besides that, I am just glad that other people had a chance to witness this stuff. We found some really interesting tracks here not far from our campsite. Uh, and actually tracked them up the hill to where I found a really impressive imprint. It's not the best cast in the world, but it's going to be my only first cast ever. So uh, I'm really proud of that. I want to thank Bigfoot of Stevens County and Extreme Expeditions Northwest for uh, letting me tag along and uh, documenting uh, what I saw and what I found. And uh, uh, even though I got a little scared, I had a really good time. Well, the 2019 Stevens County Bigfoot Expedition is coming to a close. And sadly, we weren't able to obtain the definitive proof of the existence of a Bigfoot here in the area. However, we did encounter many things which indicate that there is a creature of some size that's out there. I have yet to be anywhere where I've been exposed to so much of activity throughout the day and evening, continuously. When we've been out tracking, we have found a number of possible tracks of some large creature that's in the area. Even though we didn't find any definitive proof or evidence on this trip, every single time that we come out here, it puts us a little farther ahead in the game. Each trip is an education in and of itself. We're getting much better at identifying physical signs, such as tracks, trackways, possible tree structures. So at the end of the day, it leaves us with the need for additional research, better equipment, and more time to get back out into this area and hopefully get that definitive proof we're looking for. And I'd like to say thanks to Will from Bigfoot of Stevens County for taking the time to show us the area and bringing us out here. We can all agree that finding Bigfoot is like looking for a needle in a haystack. But the research that's been done, the data collected, the leads followed, and the support gained helps make our haystack that much smaller. Every investigation leads to new discoveries, and we can't wait for our next chapter in the richest Bigfoot country of the Pacific Northwest.